I never ever imagined there'd been this much army. It's unbelievable. It was just one big long line of, of vehicles, armoured vehicles, trucks. The first town we went into um, was a town that should have had a population of, of, of several thousand and the town was, without exception, completely empty. And it was just a scene of, of devastation, really. <laughs> Albanians were, you know, turning up from nowhere, you know, cheering us, throwing flowers at us, you know, just crying, laughing, it was brilliant. You know, it, it was um, so amazing. There's hundreds and hundreds of people just cheering, flowers being thrown at you, and we were accepted so well. We need to be successful for the sake of those people, for the sake of the stability of the region. Last night, eight member states had claims participating in the operation. NATO has demonstrated an impressive unity and resolve. Time and time again, they swept across the sky, swooping down on Serb positions just a few kilometers inside Kosovo. Yet another day of aerial bombardment intended to bring the Yugoslav army to its knees. There will be no end to the bombing until President Milosevic agrees to the conditions of the international community and the refugees are on the process of returning home. We try up to Emden, catch the boats. Personnel will return back to the unit and then they'll fly out to Marriott with the vehicles the other end in some ten days' time. We've done a lot of maintenance and uh, technical work on the vehicles, We've done a lot of range work, uh, mine awareness work, a lot of briefings by the UN team. Um, basically this is a culmination of uh, six, six weeks' hard work uh, ready to deploy to Kosovo. All the while NATO is intensifying its bombing in this border area. Several times today, bombing runs by NATO jets against Serb position. We are determined that an international military force will deploy in Kosovo once airstrikes have done their job. My priority at the moment is to make sure uh, that the brigade is ready, that the deployment of the equipment, which is what you're seeing at the moment, actually happens, uh, and to make sure that the soldiers themselves uh, are properly prepared and understand what they're likely to be asked to do um, as and when uh, an agreement is reached. The whole regiment had a day's um, UN training at JHQ. And then since then, we've done our own individual squadron training, um, such things as mine clearance, ambush drills, and some background information on the actual situation out there. The Serbs withdrew when Albanian troops became involved, but they fear the Serbs mined the village before they left. We are ready to accept UN mission, UN forces, in Kosovo under the flag of United Nations. The agreement sets out in detail the deployment of an international security force known as K4 to establish a secure environment in Kosovo. We did everything we could possibly do to avoid the conflict which is now occurring. We must stay the course and persist until we prevail. Well over 400,000 people in Kosovo have at some point been driven from their homes. That is about a fifth of the total population. Not for any legitimate military purpose, but as acts of ethnic hatred. In the past few days, another 25,000 more refugees have been forced to flee their homes. Many of us have recorded our strong appreciation of the NATO troops in building camps, in providing shelter, in supplying basic sanitation, and in handling the logistics of the supply of food for the refugees who've made it over the border. There has been organized systematic rape of women, usually in front of husbands and children. Young men have been forced to dig graves, then shot. Whole villages have been razed to the ground. Some of the stories of the cruelty and barbarity practiced by Serb militia are evil beyond belief. These acts remain the essential justification for NATO's actions. We gathered everybody onto Petrovac's training area. Um, we issued the orders, we back briefed, and from there it was a straightforward move forward. We spent seven weeks on the border in Macedonia and watched all the cruise missiles going in, the, the AAA going up and trying to shoot them out of the sky. Basically, we just got ourselves ready for the inevitable. 
So there may be small problems from the Serb army. The UCK, okay, will welcome us with their open arms to start off with until we take their weapons off of them. <laughs> okay, then they may, may change somewhat. We didn't know when we were going to get through it, it was just basically we were waiting. I can confirm that General Mijanovic and General Stefanovic have signed the agreement on behalf of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia and that I have signed on behalf of NATO. Document has now Only when NATO is satisfied the Serbs are the leaving will the bombing future. stop. Verifiable compliance with this agreement will establish the conditions for the suspension of the air campaign. There's still confusion about who in Russia told these soldiers to come here from Bosnia. The Russian foreign minister has said the deployment was unfortunate and will be reversed, and the Americans are said to be furious. The orders were, we go in at dawn. The Paras and Gurkhas of the 5th Armoured Brigade were ready. It was the roar of the first helicopters overhead that told them the signal had come. The British were going in. We got up at the crack of dawn and we went down to the helicopters that were waiting there. It was good. It wouldn't have missed it for the world. When we moved in, we had two uh, escorts with the Apaches and we're actually firing into the tree line. All were aware there were dangers below, some firing decoy flares as a precaution. The atmosphere was quite tense. There was a lot of adrenaline flowing. Next thing we know, the, uh, the loadmaster's on clipping his gun and we're thinking, what's going to happen next? As the helicopters passed over, the troops began their move. A gentlemanly invasion, this, watched politely by demused frontier police. Apprehensive, excited, slightly scared. They say about Europe's got open borders, but this one really was open. We were the first ones across. Once we, we, we uh, got off the helicopters, um, I then pushed uh, groups of four to eight men forward. Um, really, the, the point men were the front first two, and they were the, the, the initial men looking for the booby trap wires uh, and any other devices, and the rest of the team behind them were there to provide backup and support. We got through the tunnel, just about um, out the other side. At this stage, then, we looked up and we saw uh, a large sign on the tunnel uh, which said, um, NATO, welcome to the Kosovo which distracted our attention. Okay, then looking down at our feet, we found a series of um, four to six tripwires slack across the road. Our vehicles have been driving over this, but this was designed to take out troops on the ground. The idea was to land with a combination of infantry engineers on all the major obstacles. So if there were anybody wishing to sort of press a plunger and destroy it, hopefully we could stop that happening because uh, key to the whole operation was to ensure that we, we got that route open as quickly as possible to get people through. As Fire Brigade secured the defile, we already had um, the reconnaissance squadron from the Hassel Cavalry Regiment up on the border, and then we uh, moved them forward as the route opened and moved the King's Royal Hazards battle group um, forward behind them, followed by the Irish Guards. And when it came, it became clear this was to be a force so powerful that once in place, no one is going to challenge NATO's grip on this province. When we came out of the defile, um, we really had to put our skids on and get moving to get up to Pristina by nightfall. But we did. We were there. When we first went in, um, the streets were deserted. Um, there was nobody about. All the, all the t um, shops had been looted. You could see the smash windows everywhere. Some of the actually the buildings had been burnt. The houses were completely trashed. They were hiding because the only armour they had saw was Serbian armour. So they heard the engines and they just hid straight away, assuming that there was Serbs coming back. So when we, when we went in, and then it basically was giving the all clear that we're all right. People came flooding out. I think they were just so glad to see um, NATO forces on the ground. Very happy. Welcome. England Army. Albanians are, you know, turning up from nowhere, you know, cheering us, throwing flowers at us, you know, crying, laughing, it's been brilliant. There was hundreds of crowds throwing flowers and cheering and thanking NATO for coming in. 
so it was, it was good to see them. It's happy. It was almost like a deliberation of Paris. It was amazing because all the children and, and adults came out and were flinging flowers onto vehicles. And it doesn't matter that they're walking out of a ruined, bombed-out house. They still come out and greet us and, and are clearly glad to see us. It's one of the proudest days of my life. Makes it all worthwhile. You'd see tanks. Um, our enemy, is, if you would put it that way, tanks and and their all their vehicles going one way and we're coming the other. Today we saw truckloads of Serb paramilitary thugs making their defiant exit through crowds of jeering Albanians. These are the very men accused of the ethnic cleansing that brought NATO into Kosovo. We went for roughly 20 k's as a ra rather big convoy um, and then our three little tanks uh, split off onto their own. We went to, into a place called Stimli, uh, but on the way there we encountered, it must have been 60, um, 60 T-55 tanks from the Serb army, uh, which was a bit daunting to say the least, three of us versus 60. As soon as we moved into the town, we started patrolling throughout. We patrolled the city both in vehicles and out of vehicles. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of scared people here on both sides who need reassuring, and that's what we were initially providing. You've got two communities who are at, at each other's throats. In this town, you've got a lot more arms floating around, the Balkan culture of a, a gun in every household. I'm afraid we're seeing that in spades here but that they're well used to this, uh, particularly from Northern Ireland. So, blow with pistols, Robin, in your apartment. That's the flat we're looking at. Keep your weapon covered. So the woman's got the weapon yeah. now. I agree, I agree, I agree. So the woman's got the, the, woman's got the pistol. Right, sir. Just make sure if you see it, you've got to identify a weapon, yep. But this evening we witnessed Serb civilians streaming out of Kosovo in long convoys. This woman told me the Albanians had killed her son. There are many people who have been displaced, many people trying to get back to their houses, who, and they are still, still scared of their neighbours. So we are trying desperately to, to make both sides come together and understand that we, we all need to live uh, in peaceful harmony. Paratroopers patrolling the streets of Pristina tonight as British forces take control of a capital in chaos. It is a tense and dangerous time here, a day when, for the first time, British troops carried out the threat to enforce their authority. What is that? That's what, the what does it mean? Delta, Roger that. Right, that's your province. Well, what's actually happening now is the Serbs are starting to move back into the village. Uh, they deserted the village because of the trouble. Uh, the Albanians came up, looted their houses, uh, took what they can, and left them in a bit of a state. You have no authority to go into somebody else's house. No, 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 and then obviously they, they check out for mines. And when it's been cleared, we'll actually be able to go in. And then we stay, as you can see, we've been staying here for three, uh, two days now. Our job's basically changing every day. I mean, one, one day we're finding warehouse full of guns. The next day we're finding mass graves and dead bodies and such. Well, it's been worse with the rain the last couple of days because where they've been, where they've been burying bodies, the rain's been seeping into it and the blood's been coming up late. But uh, it's, it's starting to... They're starting to find them, like, you know, there's not really much you can do about that, you just got to get on with it. Uh, we've been in Pastrina for two or three days patrolling this area, um, within which is one of the police headquarters. We uncovered, uh, really, some quite atrocious things. What appears to be the covers torn from uh, personal identity documents, almost as if they were keeping tallies or scorecards. Things in a chamber range from boxes of weapons, these included knuckle dusters, also, flick knives, butterfly knives, chains. Well, this, this baseball bat has got some sort of Serb Croat um, words written on it. Apparently, this means mouth shutter. We were out on a, a normal mobile patrol when we heard two gunshots. We saw the car stop and the, the driver fall out. Obviously, we went forward. A couple of Robins at the time covered me while I went straight to the casualty. 
uh, and it was just blood, you know, down the down his chest, down his stomach. First aid was administered by the parachute regiment, indeed in conjunction with uh, the BBC News crew, uh, commanded by Kate Aidy. There's so many people coming back in that uh, it, it's hard to cope with them all. But obviously, that's what we want to see because people returning to the town, their town, is is normality starting to come back, and that is one of the main reasons we're here. We want to establish peace and get these people back to living the way they're used to living. So I flew into this airfield, not seeing the approaches, what the devastation was outside here. But as we landed, we saw there were some big bomb craters just off the runway. And obviously behind me, you can see the air terminal was destroyed. When we first arrived, the, uh, the airway was damaged in a number of places with craters because a cluster bomb was dropped, so basically we had to, we had to clear everything. Well, we've got to restore this air terminal so it can be used initially for military and humanitarian use, and then later on, in about 6 to 12 months, it becomes an international airport once more. The team contains a couple of chartered engineers, both civil and mechanical. We also have garrison engineers, design draftsmen and clerk of works. We aim to get the designs completed within a month. Uh, the work will take some time longer, probably within three or four months. You've seen the uh, trucks in the background. We had to pick them up from one area and move them. Also, um, buildings in clear free buildings for bomblets just basically makes the area safe. We've got the, uh, the terminal down on the airhead itself. Again, as I said, it was damaged, but we've got that up and running, but there's a few more jobs to be done yet. We've also got something called the TFA, which is temporary field accommodation, that we're putting in for the RAF now. We have to provide, firstly, water, and also we've got facilities there for showers. It was a bit of a Heath Robinson affair that we put together with NATO pallets, crates, etc., but we rigged up some showers, and they're still up and running, and they work fine. On the terminal itself, really making it safe so people could walk through it and use it as an arrivals and departure facility. Uh, well, we're doing a lot of patrolling in the area uh, to give security to people in here. Uh, we've also put up some observation posts to overwatch the town and really to prevent uh, looting from one side to the other. What we're also going to do is a couple of reassurances on specific people who've asked us to go and call on them. We've visited one of them before and uh, the other one is in this location here. All soldiers are working exceptionally hard here. Um, an average day for us is probably 18 to 20 hours. Uh, they're very busy, but there's so much going on, incidents, and they, they love it. The guys are, the morale's very high, especially since the mail started coming through on a regular basis. The soldiers have to be far more vigilant at night, uh, and consequently we have to patrol a lot slower so we don't miss anything as we're moving around the town. The majority it seems to be um, looting, people uh, stealing from houses of refugees who've yet to return from abroad. Uh, and also the threats and intimidation uh, from one uh, side of the community to the other, trying to force others out so they can take their houses from them. We um, just come down here on patrol and there's an uh, old lady and her daughter being intimidated upstairs by uh, uh, some local thugs. So me and one of my team are going to go upstairs and wait in the woman's flat just in case there is any reoccurrence of people coming in to give her an hour time. <laughs> We've had uh, murders here, we've had looting, we've had arson, um, and there is a thug element here, uh, which we're really trying to get on top of now and sort out. More people have now arrived coming down from the hills, and also people from uh, neighbouring countries, and now all the uh, refugees are starting to come back into the area. And obviously they now feel more secure seeing us on the, on the streets and also in the countryside moving around. They feel more secure, and again, they can get on with their lives. Uh, the town's pretty much up to its full population again. Uh, market day is the day which is the most difficult to control. We see four to five thousand people coming in here um, with a company of a hundred. That's quite difficult to police throughout. We started off with an empty town. Now the market's thriving. People are back. We've gained the trust of the KLA and we've taken the weapons off the streets uh, and we've provided the secure environment people need to be able to rebuild their lives. You know, you've done something, you're happy to see them happy. We expect to be here for as long as K4 needs us. Um, we'll carry on securing the streets and doing our job on, in Pristina. Yeah, we're very, very proud. Very proud to be NATO and very proud to be British.